In this video, I'm going to reveal my entire YouTube video editing workflow, from how to organize the project all the way to the export. I'm Amanda Horvath, and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. So if you're looking to use video in your strategy this year, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. I ran a video marketing company for six years, and during that time, I worked with a lot of different subcontractors and outsourcers and quickly figured out that pretty much everyone out there has a different way of going about the video editing process, from how to organize the files to doing the actual selects and everything. And I found very quickly that this was not going to work for a business and that I needed to systematize the process so that whoever I worked with, they would just adopt the process and it would be smooth sailing from there. So the process that I am going to share with you works for any video that you are going to create, even though I'm specifically talking about my YouTube video editing workflow, it also works with brand videos, testimonials, Facebook ads, or whatever video you would like to create. I'm going to be diving into the high level of each step along the way so that you can see the entire workflow and how it works. But if you would like the breakdown of the exact step-by-step, -step, including what buttons to push, where to put your footage, how I organize everything, then be sure to join my DIY video roadmap. At the time of making this video, I make the program available about once per quarter, and that's because I like going through it with groups of people. Now, having said that, eventually I might put it on Evergreen, which means that it is available at all times. So depending on when you're watching this video, just follow the link in the description below to determine when you can join the program. Step one. Drop all the footage. While this is an obvious step, it is one of the most important parts when you are going about the video editing process. Because if you don't organize your footage properly, then very quickly things can get out of control and you might lose either video or audio files. And when you do that, you aren't going to be able to go back to the project that you edited in the past say something got moved and stuff goes offline, it is not fun, just trust me. So I've created another video on how to organize your project file because this is an in-depth thing in and of itself. So you can go check out that video if you want to dive deeper into this section. And if you were looking for the best hard drives for video editing, which I highly recommend storing your video files on an external hard drive just because they can be quite large, then you can go ahead and check out the video in the cards. But obviously, step number one is to drop your footage. Step two, sync audio and video. Personally, I record my audio separate from my video. So I have an audio recording device where the audio is going directly in there and the video is just the video footage with the camera sound. So because of that, I have to take the audio and video in post-production and sync them together. So I personally use a program called Pluralize for this. It just makes it super simple. And because I ran a video marketing company for six years, I spent tons of time syncing audio and video files. And that program was just easier for me to use than doing it by hand every time. Now, once again, I dive deep into how to do this without the program as well with in the DIY video roadmap. So if you would like further insight into that, then once again, be sure to join the program. Now, of course, if you are recording your audio directly into your camera, say you have a shotgun mic on the top of your camera, or maybe you're just shooting on your iPhone with a lavalier microphone plugged directly into it, or whatever mic plugged directly into it, then you can just skip this step. Step three, clean the audio files. I personally clean every single audio file that I use within my videos, and that's because it really brings up the production value of your videos. So say you are using one of the affordable lavalier microphones that I recommend on this channel, then this step is going to take that from being kind of a mediocre microphone to being one that sounds absolutely amazing. So this step in my eyes is essential. 
Within my program, I walk through how to get the audio down to one step every single time that you clean your audio. So you only have to do the entire cleaning process once and you're going to save it. And then the next time that you need to apply that effect, then all you have to do is click one button and it's applied, saving you tons of time. You're welcome. Step four, create the project file. I personally edit all of my files within Premiere Pro. So I am a big advocate for Adobe Creative Cloud. Adobe Audition is part of that suite as well. It is a subscription price point, but it is seriously so worth it. And if you are getting value from my channel, then I highly recommend just sticking to Premiere Pro because I am teaching the full step-by-step -step within that program and it's going to make things a little bit harder if you aren't within that program. So I say bite the bullet, let me save you tons of time for a minimal investment of using Premiere Pro and don't worry, even as a beginner, I will teach you how to use it. Once I have the project file created, I am going to organize the footage. So I create four different bins which are folders, so bin is equivalent to folder within the Premiere Pro language, and the first folder I name 01 sequences, and then the second 02 footage, and this is where I'm going to put any of the footage that I have shot, whether it is separate audio and video files or the audio and video files together, say you're shooting on an iPhone, just import it into that folder. Then I have a folder for music, so 03 music, and then a folder for graphics, 04 graphics. So this is where maybe your logo goes, or if you have transitions like I do in my videos, then I put all of those into that one folder. I follow this structure on every single video that I create, even if it's super, super simple, and that's because I can open up project files from years ago and know where everything is and I'm not relying on memory to know where things are. So I cannot recommend enough using this exact file structure. Step five, organize takes and choose favorites. So the first step here is to actually take all of the takes that I have for one video that I shot and put it into a sequence. And from there, I go through and I watch all of the takes and I label and organize them according to the script. So the way that I personally record my videos, and I would recommend this for you as well, is to go through the script linearly because that makes it easier when you're editing. So I'll do multiple takes of the hook, which is the first section of it. And if you haven't seen my quick start guide to video where I describe the YouTube script structure, then I highly recommend grabbing that. It's linked in the description below. I'll do several takes of the hook, several takes of what I call the explainer statement, which I also describe in the quick start guide to video and then the topic intro and my key points and everything as i'm going through and watching the footage all i have to do is cut out any of the bloopers and label and organize it accordingly and then as i'm going through and doing that i'm also choosing my favorite takes so I have a certain way of doing this, and once again, I describe the full step-by-step -step within the program, but I wanted to give you guys some insight into the full process. So if this is helping you, go ahead and click like and drop a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think and how it compares to your editing workflow. Step six, assemble the rough cut. Now I want to point out that I did not start by creating the edit. A lot of beginner editors, when they're first starting, they assume that you have all of your footage and then you're going to jump immediately into the edits. And this is where a lot of them mess up. So if you can just get into the edit and watch all of the takes and choose your favorites, then the edit becomes a lot easier. So I call the edit the rough cut because it's not yet polished. So I go in and I choose all of my favorite takes, put them into a new sequence that I call the rough cut, and then I tighten it up so that it does have all of the parts that I want for the script that I've written from start to finish. Within this step is where I also add the crop in and outs that you see within my videos. So the reason that I do that is because it allows me to hide the edit between different takes. 
So when I crop in, I might be having a different take than what I was previously doing, yet it looks like a continuous flow of takes. The alternative to this is to use jump cuts. I'm personally not a big fan of this, but if you like that style, then you're more than welcome to use this style. Step seven, add graphics. Once I have my rough assembly in place with the crop in and crop outs, that's when I go through and actually add the graphics over my video. And once again, if you do choose to join the DIY video roadmap, I teach you how to create that graphics package for yourself as well. And believe me, you can do it even as a beginner. So just like that, up in the production quality. Step eight, add B-roll. The footage that you are looking at right now is what we call A-roll in video, and B-roll is the footage that goes over this shot. So it's just anything to make it a little bit more interesting. So if I'm talking about, say, you know, some random thing like a shot of Austin, then you might be seeing Austin on the screen. So while it seems like that's a voiceover with my voice talking, it's actually just footage placed over this shot here. Now, I don't personally always add B-roll to my videos. It is an extra step that does take a little bit of extra time because you're needing to shoot something additional. But if I was to add B-roll, what I would typically do is maybe even shoot it after the fact. So say I might have the rough cut done, then go out and shoot the B-roll, just what I need or alternatively, I might shoot it at the same time that I'm shooting the A roll. And in that case, what I might do is I might not end up using all of it. So I would go through, watch all of the clips that I shot and choose my favorites of those clips in a certain sequence. So now we're up to three sequences. We have all of the takes, we have the rough cut, and now we have a B-roll selects sequence as well. And then I take the favorites from there and I actually place it into my edit. Once again, I think that beginners often get overwhelmed with editing because they just jump straight to the edits and they know that at that part of the script, wherever they get to that they want to have a B-roll clip, then they're trying to find that clip in addition to going through the script linearly, and it just gets really overwhelming and confusing versus taking it one step at a time. Step nine, color correct. This is yet another step that is going to up the production quality of your videos. So you've seen probably my iPhone vlogs, and within all of those, the reason it looks so good is because I've actually gone through and color corrected it. So it does not matter if you're shooting once again on low affordable gear or whatever, iPhone versus a DSLR, if you follow the steps within this process, you up the production quality enough to where most people aren't going to be able to tell. So what color correction is, is you have your image. So this is this image without color correction. And then with color correction, you know, I might up the exposure, bring down the blacks, bring up the contrast or whatever, just to make it look really good. So this really takes it to the next level. Step 10, export the video. Once your edit is complete with color correction and B-roll and graphics and all of the things, then you can go about exporting your footage. Now, when you're first starting, you might not be aware that there are actually two options when exporting your footage. You can either click export and that will export within Premiere Pro and that's going to take up your Premiere Pro, so you're not actually gonna be able to edit anything else moving forward when you're exporting or you can click the Q button and the Q is going to send it to what they call media encoder and that will edit the, or render the footage, export the footage in the background so that you can actually continue editing. So say you have maybe a second video that you want to work on while that first video is exporting, you can do that if you use media encoder. So pro tip for you there. If you would like to see this entire process from start to finish, then I highly recommend watching one of these videos. And if you liked this video, be sure to click like, drop a comment below, and don't forget to join the waitlist for the DIY video roadmap. I look forward to having you inside the program. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.